Good morning, everyone. Time for another member update. So, if you remember yesterday's update, I uh, the balance was twenty eight eight. You can see it's twenty nine five. Um, made some money trading Ripple. Unfortunately, I did not take my advice. Hold on, just a moment. Let me adjust my microphone. Okay. Did not take my own advice <clears throat> and end up getting stuck. Uh, because I took my profits in Bitcoin and you can see I'm long 0.72 Bitcoin. That's, I'm a little bit uncomfortable with that. So I'm going to call this trading stuck because I'm stuck right now. I'm stuck in Bitcoin. So the big question is what to do. Um, I could just completely sell out right now and get out and get flat. The only reason I'm hesitant to do that is because uh, my cost basis, because of some of the trades I did earlier in Bitcoin, is around 15000 Uh There's a big differential right now between Bitcoin on Bitfinex, Bitstamp, and Poloniex. Poloniex price is significantly lower than the other two. Normally, Poloniex follows. So you can see here that my trades, I did some buying this morning, and you can see my trades came in here. Um, 15, 15, 1, 14, 9, 14, 7, 14, 6, 14, 5. I got filled at 14, 5, 4, 9. So I have a stronger position than I normally would have. But I'm stuck with more Bitcoin than I want. So there's a couple of things I could do. Uh, probably the best thing I could do is just do absolutely nothing because it's starting to look like a bottom. But I'm very uncomfortable carrying this much Bitcoin. Uh, so now if this crosses over here, uh, I'll probably just hold. But it better do it soon because I don't like to be stuck. Um, so let's discuss, well, first let's talk about the news here. Maybe the market will come and save me and I won't have to worry about it. Uh, you can see up here in the upper left-hand corner the differential. This little, I keep these little tickers up there so I can see them. We're trading at 15, let's make sure this is on uh, Bitfinex, it is. So we're trading at 15.658 at Bitfinex and 15.344. Uh, always keep an eye on that differential on Poloniex. Um, so we'll just review the news a little bit here. Uh, like I said, last night I played Ripple. Um, Ripple just had a perfect formation. I, I bought this. Uh, I bought the, the right end of this pennant. Uh, wrote it pretty well. Did a little bit different than I usually do, which was I started to establish a position before the breakout and then as it was breaking out into heavy volume I was adding to the position. Uh, what I did when the, vol when the uh, market was extremely strong, let's come over and look at the ripple chart here. And uh, another indication that we may be at a possible bottom is when these things freeze up really bad. Um, I've noticed that there's a tendency of uh, the market to rally after that. So maybe should have hung on to Ripple. But uh, the way I played it was I got in around here. Uh, I, I, was, I was adding cheap, very small position. Then I began to increase my position with this rise. Now normally what I will do is after a series of green candlesticks, can't really tell you how many green candlesticks, but just after a series of green candlesticks, uh, I will sell. What I did this time was I scaled out cells above the market. So my cells that I scaled out were at, uh, actually this is in USDT, so I have to show you, um, that's interesting, Ripple's the number one volume leader. Very, very interesting. So uh, I had my first sell at 54. Uh, I'm just going to quote them as these uh, first two digits. So I got in here in the 40s, uh, added to the position it was rising, and um, 
normally I would have sold there and instead of selling there I decided you know what I'm probably right on this one so I'm gonna sell uh, staggered sells I took 25 percent of my position and put a sell at 54 that sold right there market kinda topped right there went sideways I also put in a sell at 64 74 and 84 now you can see up here my 64 got filled uh, this morning uh, on this rally I dumped the rest of what I had sp specifically due to Bitcoin weakness I did not like the weakness in Bitcoin so you can see here it looks like Bitcoin is going to come and save me from my decision we'll see um, Yeah, we're kind of taking off here. So now that the market's rallying, obviously I should hold for much, much higher prices, but I'm extremely uncomfortable with carrying this larger percentage of Bitcoin. So what I will do to try to scale out of the position is look for discrepancies in the bid ask and for a significant series of green candlesticks to sell into the strength. So right now we're looking for a break above this price. Uh, if we get a break above this price, we will expect it to run. Um, the differential here now is 664 and 475. Um, probably, yeah, it's weakening. I mean, it's just it literally, as you look at it, it weakens. It, it, the volatility is is phenomenal. I still I can never get over the volatility. Um, it's just it's something to behold. Is the only way to describe it. So uh, I will look to probably lighten as this rises, if it does. So uh, back to the Ripple story. Ripple is a coin that I don't trust. First of all, let me say that. I, I don't trust the coin at all. Um, I researched it a long time ago when it first came out and it didn't. I did not like the way it was designed and I did not like the people that were involved. That's about all I can remember. Uh, basically, I do a cursory research of a cryptocurrency when it comes out and if it doesn't meet my criteria, it gets labeled because fundamentally it's 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 not going to change its nature a, a leopard can't change its spots um i guess in theory you could be a fork and i think completely revised but with so many choices out there it's not worth my time so ripple went into that bin the bad bin now that doesn't mean i'm not going to trade it it just means that i'm going to be very careful about holding it uh you know what what is the criterion of something that goes in the good bin versus the bad bin? Uh, the first criterion, absolutely, above all, is uh, decentralization. The, in my opinion, the absolute essence of cryptocurrency is, is decentralized. If it's not decentralized, in my opinion, it's not a cryptocurrency. It's just a fraud. It's just somebody pretending to have a cryptocurrency. Bitcoin was the original. Bitcoin is truly decentralized. And I think if you did an analysis, you'd be absolutely shocked at how many coins really aren't truly decentralized. Um, it's decentralized simply means that there is no one source of authority uh, that can fail. The blockchain is a shared distributed peer-to-peer -peer ledger it doesn't have to be a blockchain it could be something like iota's tangle now that's coming out but it has to have that essential feature of decentralization that's the first thing i look for at ripple i don't believe ripple passed that test i i think i researched it and i found that it was you know it didn't pass it and then you know significant pre-mining uh, enormous float of coins questionable float of coins uh, it the other one probably I'll say number two on that is an absolute limitation of the number of coins that can exist 
So if it, if it doesn't have that, then what, what's the difference between that and a fiat currency? With the fiat currency, you're dependent upon a particular government not printing its money into oblivion. And with the cryptocurrency, you're dependent upon whoever's in charge not printing it into oblivion. Same issue. So here's one, for example. This is one that I'll play is Dogecoin. Now, don't quote me on this because, again, I did an initial al analysis and that I was done. And the initial analysis with Dogecoin was that it does not pass the, t the second test. It does not have a limitation on the number of coins that can come into existence. So this is one that I'll watch. I'll occasionally play from time to time. Uh, but you can see from the chart that it, it... The chart just appears to me to be something that is kind of like a, a long-term, uh, um, a um, repeating pump and dump is how I'll describe it. So you can see when the coin initially came out, it ran very, very high, uh, relatively speaking. <laughs> and not that high for other coins, about 300 Satoshis. You can see that it crashed down here to, uh, let's see, are, we, are they gonna give us prices? Yeah. Uh, the low came in about 23 Satoshis. Yeah. Close to a 95% bear market. Then you can see we got a huge pump. That pump was followed by a slow bleed, and then another pump, another slow bleed, and then another pump, and then another slow bleed. Those are extremely dangerous. That's how you get a corpse on your hands. You buy into this pump, and you don't play it right and you get stuck and look how long you can get stuck a year you can get stuck didn't get out until this next pump so yeah that's criterion number two absolutely uh, there has to be a limitation on the number of coins I'm not uh, again my initial analysis did not find that with ripple it did not find that with doge that's put that puts those two completely out of the running as far as something that I will accumulate. It does not put them out of the running as something that I will play, but I will analyze the charts and become extremely cautious, much more cautious than I would for a true peer-to-peer, -peer, decentralized, limited cryptocurrency. Uh, another story here with Tether, that's always very concerning to me because uh, I tend to protect my money in Tether at this point there really is an alternative. The uh, other alternative is to put your money into a uh, cryptocurrency every night when you're done trading and pull it down to a wallet. Uh, un unless you are trading, it, unless your trading account was something to the tune of, say, a million dollars or more, then it's just cost prohibitive to do so. If, if you had a million dollar trading account, then a $20 Bitcoin transaction cost is nothing. So you could, let's just say roughly Bitcoin's $20,000, five Bitcoin for uh, uh, $100,000, so 50 Bitcoin. So you could pull 50 Bitcoin down into a wallet each night to pay your 20 bucks to do so. Now that, again, that means you're gonna be sleeping in Bitcoin. If you're comfortable sleeping in Bitcoin, which I am not, um, then you can do that. But uh, other than that, other than choosing, and you could choose another coin besides Bitcoin, you could choose uh, something else that you felt, sorry, I'm trying to build a position in Stellar right now. And uh, oh, it, looks, it looks pretty healthy. Oh, we just got a tick up. Carrying a thousand. I'm looking for a return to the pendant formation. Yes, it's looking pretty healthy. I'll go ahead and add another thousand here. Always change the number to one above higher just to get filled at the ask. I tend to buy a stellar in blocks of a thousand. Um, so back to what I was saying, you know, that that test of what the cryptocurrency is going to be, you know, that, that uh, is very difficult for, you know, to pass all the tests. And of course, a cryptocurrency that you're going to sleep on, 
um, it's going to have to pass all those tests and it's going to have to pass a fundamental test. You're going to have to be confident enough about the cryptocurrency to, to actually want to hold it. That's, that's a tough test to pass. So, um, yeah, I'm nervous about Tether. Uh, my ultimate response really to the uncertainty was to go to cash, dollar cash. And uh, I have a linked bank account linked to Coinbase, and I take the hit from selling on Coinbase. The hit's not that bad selling on Coinbase because they tend to have a um, huge premium. But there's a bad hit buying on Coinbase. Uh, I usually will not buy on Coinbase unless there's just absolute carnage. Uh, we're talking blood in the streets. We're talking uh, carnage like uh you know like this i think that was the last time i bought on coinbase was that that dip so um you know i will buy on coinbase and and trade on coinbase but that's just so illiquid and so expensive there are no really good options right now and like i said the other day the fact that there are no really good options is actually very bullish because that just means that the vast majority of sheep, and that's we're talking about what is that fulcrum of the population? I would say the fulcrum is like a 90 10 split, maybe 95 5, maybe 85 15, where 5, 10, or 15 percent of the population are going to deal with the pain of, of, de of dealing with these systems. Whereas the vast bulk of the population just isn't going to bother, it's too much trouble. And they have too many things going on in their lives. They just don't care. Now, if uh, the systems are simplified and made simple for the masses, then all of a sudden that fulcrum is going to swing. And you know how that is, you know, uh, whether it's a, uh, a teeter-totter or anything like that. Once it just gets going the other way, boom, it goes the other way, hard. And that's what will happen, I believe, will probably happen with the cryptocurrency space. Uh, with... Um, the, that bulk of the population that is not in cryptocurrencies. Now, if that happens, we're going to see uh, a, a, a big surge of money coming in. Probably a huge surge and then probably a crash would be my guess. So now we seem to be rolling over again here. Um, I have not scaled out of anything. I'm still carrying way too much Bitcoin. Now, the other alternative you can look at is to just to get bigger. In other words, to just add more as the price drops. The problem with that is, is what I covered yesterday, is that you can get trapped. Now, you can see the percentage of my, of my portfolio here. Uh, I have about 1.13 Bitcoin in cash. I have about 0.71 Bitcoin in Bitcoin. So I'm getting a little bit heavy on Bitcoin. If... I keep adding to the Bitcoin position as the price of Bitcoin falls. Uh, I can get so top heavy in Bitcoin that I, I don't have any money left to buy. And if if I run into a long term bear market like I talked about yesterday, I'm trapped and I take losses day after day after day after day. And that's how eventually they carry you out. <laughs> the term from market wizards, you know, they're going they're just going to carry you out on a stretcher. So uh, looking to get lighter, um, that's the goal. But, uh, you know, where's, where's the bottom here? Hopefully we have, we're not going to tangle with a 90% bear market before I can get lighter here. Uh, the way you prevent yourself from getting too heavy is one thing that you can do is... If you're trading an alt that's in USDT, for example, I was in Ripple. I took my profits in Ripple in Bitcoin. That was because that was the trade. That was what I was trading for the price. So there's no way for me to make technical decisions on the dollar chart based on the Bitcoin chart. So I didn't have a choice. I had to sell in Bitcoin. That was a mistake. What I should have done is I should have put my Ripple sells to a dollar equivalent Bitcoin price and 
because Ripple is one of those coins that's listed on the USDT exchange as well as the Bitcoin exchange, then I could have liquidated into USDT and I would not be in the position that I'm in right now, which is stuck. Um, so that's another thing that you always want to keep in mind. Now, we, see, we seem to be rolling over here. Uh, we're we're going to have a resolution of this issue very, very, very soon. Uh, this this MACD here is encouraging for me because you can see that uh, on the previous MACD lows like this, we've had significant rallies. There, 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 there. So I would say there's probably about a 95% chance that there will be a significant rally here. And we won't roll over and go into new lows. But there is about that 5% chance just lurking out there. So uh, take note of my balance. You will see it in the next update, whether I successfully rolled out of this position. Um, I'm roughly making 500 to 1,000 a day. Uh, I haven't taken a significant loss, but that doesn't mean you can't. I think uh, in Market Wizards, I think, he was interviewing Gary Byfelt. I don't remember which trader it was. I think it, for some reason, I think it was Gary Byfelt. But he asked him, said, uh, so, you know, how often, do you, how often do you take a loss? And he said, I, I've never taken a loss. Uh, I've never lost. And the author was absolutely incredulous. He's like, well, that's not possible. He's like, well, I don't know what to tell you. But I've traded for years and I've never taken a loss. I've never, I've never lost. I've been right every time. So, I mean, it's possible. <laughs> Boy, what a swelled head you'd end up with. <laughs> but uh, I, I have taken, I mean, I take more losses than I take uh, gains. But I always make sure that my losses are very, very tiny. So if I begin to enter a position and it doesn't act the way it should act, I don't add to it. Uh, and then, of course, if it continues to go against me, then that proves that I'm wrong. I get out. That means I take a very, very small loss. Uh, so I take a lot of losses looking for a big gain. So there's another trader in Market Wizards who uh, I don't remember his name, but he talked about that same strategy of loss, 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 gain. So he might take a half a percent to one percent loss. Uh, maybe five or six times in a row trying to find that sweet spot uh, entry point where he's right and he knows he's right and he can add to the position and he'll take six or seven half a percent percent losses in a row and then he'll make a 25 30 35 40 45 50 percent gain in one trade and that obviously makes up for those six or seven losses so i'll do an update next time starting with my balance and uh let you know how i got out of this pickle and we'll talk to you next time